params are a great way to introduce data to our definitions. The inputs, however, provide really interesting ways that we can interact with our definition. We've already seen some of these, for example, the number slider and the panel. Let's take a closer look at the number slider. I'm going to put one of these on the canvas. By default, the number slider starts at 0 and goes to 1, and it has three values after the decimal point. If you recall, because now you're becoming a pro at Grasshopper, you can double click on the canvas, you get a pop up, and we can bring down a new slider with a shortcut. So I can put 0, less than 10, for example, and press Enter. Now I get a new slider. Notice, though, that the slider is really just integer values. This is because it's important what kind of numbers you put in, and I put a 0 and a 10. If I were to do the same thing, this time saying 0, 10.0, press Enter, now I get a slider with one value after the decimal point. What's actually driving all of this? Well, to see it, why don't we double click where it says slider? Now we get all of the properties for the slider exposed. We can give it a name, for example, very important slider. We'll talk about expressions later on. What I'm interested in now is setting up the parameters to the slider. For example, the accuracy, is it a real number, an integer, are we looking at even numbers or odd numbers, and eventually the numeric domain. I could make this negative, for example, go from negative 10 to 10, and I can set the actual value that the slider is going to be on. So now it goes from negative 10 to 10. Let's double click this again and switch this to just even values. Notice that it snaps to even values. There's a lot of different things we can do to edit that. Now the panel we're pretty familiar with, and I'm just going to repeat here that again we can double click on the canvas and with double quotes start writing some text. And now press enter. So that's just going to save us some time when we want to use panels. What else do we have in here? We have a couple of Boolean toggles and buttons. Let's see how this looks. The toggle is really like your light switch. You turn it on, you turn it off. The button is slightly different. Let's bring down a panel to see the result. By default, it starts as false, and it's going to be true while we're pressing it. Otherwise, it snaps back to false. We can change the normal and press state. We have a couple of other funky things here. For example, the control knob is a lot like the slider, but round. We have an MD slider, which is actually a combination of two sliders, so an X and a Y. If you double click it, you can actually change the domain of each of them. And we have this ghostly three dimensional GUI that was actually never implemented in Grasshopper 1. Perhaps it'll be there for Grasshopper 2. Some of the other things here we'll talk about as we go on. For example, color. We can use color to paint things different ways. It starts off as a white swatch, but we can right click it here and change it to any color we like, even add opacity. We'll talk about reading files later on. But finally, I want to talk about the image sampler. We can even use images to drive different parts of our definition. If I double click here, where it says File Path, I click on this ellipsis, and I'll find some image. For example, this one. Notice that it treats the image as a domain in X from 0 to 1 and in Y from 0 to 1. So this allows me to sample pixels all about this image. I can add some different filters to that, for example, just to get the saturation or the red or the green or the blue. I'll leave it as is and say OK. And there we have an image. You can also save the image with the definition. Let's combine some of this. So for example, I'm going to plug in the MD slider to the image sampler and a panel to the end there. As I move around the image sampler, I'm sampling different parts of the image. So if I go to the corner there, it's telling me that I have this particular color. OK. So this is a representation of a point somewhere on this image. And the result is the RGB color at that point. Throughout the course, we're going to be using all these kinds of different inputs to control our grasshopper definitions.